Go to your local Walmart, go to the birthday aisle, and pick up some cello bags. Make sure they are these ones that are 97 cents. Open your bags. These bags are made of cellophane or plastic, and when they reflect light, they look really pretty. These are two ways you can fold your cello bag. You can fold it like such. I would suggest this for if you're making larger pieces. In my case, I am going to cut this bag in half and also fold it a couple of times. Cut up your bag. Cut small pieces. You can fold or unfold as you cut to make smaller or larger pieces as you go. Prep your polymer clay and warm it up. Press it flat. Roll it out. It should be pretty thin, about an eighth of an inch. Use a circular shaped mold. I am using a sauce cup, but if you have cutters, those work just as well. Make sure before you cut any clay that the piece will fit on your vase. I am cutting out two of these circular pieces. Make sure to cut out smaller pieces. I am using the flat end of my roller as a cutting guide. I am cutting out four pieces and smoothing the edges out after I cut them. For smaller pieces, it is usually easier to remove any extra clay around the edges rather than removing them one at a time. For the bottom of my vase, since it has cuts in the sides, I am using a cut piece of clay as a guide, lining it up, and cutting a semicircular shape. If you want to match a piece and replicate it, line it up with a piece of clay and cut around it. Start to place pieces of cup bag onto your clay. You can place them one by one, you could also use tweezers to place them as well, and you could do this for a more controlled pattern. This will also take a lot more time. For a faster method and more of a randomized pattern, you can also spread out some of the cut bag pieces. And then what you do is press the clay onto it. If you use this method, make sure to remove any pieces that are stuck off of the sides. You also might want to or need to fill in blank space with a few pieces. For larger pieces, with this method, use your hand to brush off the surface to go and take off any extra. Keep in mind, this bag is plastic and any unsecured pieces will warm up and fall off when you bake this. Put the pieces in place. Match your pattern on the other side of your vase. Bake the clay. It took about 6 minutes for my clay to be fully baked. And then let it cool down. Once cool, clean off any extra clay and fingerprints. At this time, to better secure your clay, you can use adhesive on the back sides of the baked pieces. Use your hand and lightly brush off any extra cello pieces that may have curled up in the oven. Place your flowers. Find a shelf or sunny area in your home to display your vase. The first thing you want to do is get your epoxy all mixed up. I am using Stone Coat Countertops Countertop Epoxy. I like this one because it's heat resistant, scratch resistant. It comes in a part A and part B and you mix them in equal parts. And I have already pre-mixed my resin. So that's the first thing that you want to do. This is a silicone mold for the tray that I got off of Etsy but you can also find them on Amazon and other places. And this is the iridescent cellophane wrap or cello wrap, and it is awesome. You can tell it sticks to this, the silicone very well. So we're gonna cut a piece that is large enough to cover this mold. Plus I'm gonna do a couple of the matching coasters because I think that looks great with trays and why not? So I'm cutting that piece. Now we don't need this whole thing for this. We are going to be scrunching it up. So I am going to cut I think about this size. And don't worry about um, squishing it up because that's what we're going to be doing already. And it doesn't have to be per cut, cut perfectly or anything. I'm going to cut a little more off this side. Another thing you can do with this project is you can cut um, different pieces, like cut it almost like confetti. And there's also iridescent uh, cellophane confetti, I believe, that you can just buy just like that. So we don't want the cellophane directly on the bottom. 
because that's it'll be pretty impossible to get it flat. So we're going to put a really thin layer of the resin down first. And I'm just going to spread this around. And this is done in a few stages. This is not a casting resin, so it's not meant to be poured very deep. But we want to do this in a few layers anyways, so it works out just fine. Make sure you get it all the way into all of your edges. Don't miss any corners or you will end up with uneven spots. So push it into all of your edges. Make sure you're doing your resin in a warm enough environment that it's easy enough to move it around. If need be, heat it up. Okay, now I'm gonna take my piece of cellophane and I am going to purposely kind of scrunch it up. And this is gonna add dimension, depth, a bit more bling here. See that? And actually before I put that in, I am going to heat up my resin to get rid of the air bubbles. Because this is a silicone mat, you don't want to use a torch because you can actually burn your mat. So I'm going to use a heat gun. This is an Amtake heat gun. I'm not going to put it up all the way. And I'm just going to go ahead and gently remove those bubbles. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and put the cellophane in. And I want it to stay kind of scrunched up, but you need to flatten it as much as you can. If you wanna get really creative with it, you can actually cut it around your mold so you have a more exact shape. But because we're crinkling it all up, I'm not worried about that too much. Use the extra resin to push any parts down so that it is as flat as possible. This is the first layer. So as soon as I have this pressed down as much as I can, I'm going to go ahead and throw a little bit of resin on it. And then we're going to let it cure for a bit and then come back and put yet even another layer. And we may want to cut off any pieces that are sticking up if need be. But if you just work it for a little bit, you should be able to get all those pieces to stick down pretty well. So don't, make sure your piece is not too, too big so that it's impossible to get it all stuck down. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and throw a little bit of resin on top of this now. Not a lot, because we're gonna come back and do our next layer in a little bit but enough to get it covered and to help flatten it if need be. Okay, that looks pretty good. And like I said, if there are pieces that are sticking up later, we can always cut them off or sand them off if need be. Okay, good. I'm gonna let that sit for a little while while we do the coasters. And same thing for the coasters. So I have this extra piece which should be plenty. I'm gonna just cut it in half. And my hands are currently covered with resin, so I'm gonna go ahead and just, before I cut it even, I'm gonna squish this all up. And then I'm gonna use the scissors <laughs> that are already messed up instead of my nicer ones. Cutting a few of these ends off, and if need be, we can put a couple extra pieces in there. Perfect. All right. Same thing. I'm going to dump some resin in there, heat it up, and then add the cellophane or cello wrap. Okay. I'm going to take my pieces, and they're already all nice and crinkled up. Go ahead and shove them down in there as good as possible. And these are kind of um, like geode shape inspired coaster molds. 
So they go pretty well with the tray mold. Okay, that looks pretty good actually. Throw a little bit more resin on top of these. And spread it around. All right, so that's it for this. We're going to leave it for, like I said, about four hours, and then we'll be back. All right, we're back. It has now been about four and a half hours. These are still sticky, not totally dry. And at this stage, we're going to place the handles in there. So be sure where you're placing it before you put it down. Try to make it straight. And I like to put about an inch from this sign. So I'm going to go ahead and shove this down in and then do the same on the other side. You can, of course, be more exact with your measurements if you want, but I've found that this works just fine. So you're pushing it down into the sticky resin. The reason you don't want to do this when the resin hasn't cured at all is it could just fall over. Another thing is that you can attach these after uh, it's fully dry. There are screws and you can definitely drill right through resin. But in this case, um, I think this is better and definitely easier. I now have some more resin that I've mixed up. And we're gonna go ahead and pour a top coat on this. I'm gonna pour a bunch right in the middle here. And I'm also going to pour that top coat on the coasters. So at this stage, I'm fairly filling these up. I'm gonna make sure that any of that cello wrap gets fully covered. And same thing on here. Obviously avoid your handles. You can put your additional clear resin in first and then do the handles. I like to just do it this way and just be careful around the handles. And just put a nice thick layer in there. Okay, good. Now check to make sure that it fills in all the crevices and goes all the way to all the walls on all sides. This looks pretty good. Couple spots though, help it along if needed with your hands or with a brush or some other tool like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this with the heat gun and it looks like these coasters filled in nicely. I'm gonna hit it with the heat gun and then that's it. We're going to go ahead and leave it. And then we're going to let this fully cure for the full 24 hours. And then we'll be back to see the final results. Here is our tray and coaster set totally dry. I love the colors in this. I love the iridescence. Looks amazing. This would also look excellent in a bathroom with like nail polish and stuff like that on it. Super easy to make and really goes with everything in my house. <laughs>